started, this is Steve with Smitty's Fly Box. We're tying the Swing Man, which is a articulated fly. So I'm using an Orienten hook. This is the back hook that we're gonna start on. It's a smaller hook. This is a size two, and it's a streamer hook. So we're gonna just start our thread like we normally would. Take our thread back to our tie-in point, which is directly above the barb of the hook. That's where we're gonna tie in our rabbit strip. So I'm just going to wet my fingers and part a little space there about an inch up the hide. And that's where I'm going to tie it down, directly above the barb of the hook. And this way uh, we don't mat down any of those hairs. We can get in there between and, and uh, tie it in. We're just going to advance our thread forward about three quarters up the way up the hook shank. And this is where we're going to tie in our next material, which is polar chenille. Stuff comes from Hairline. It's pretty cool. Um, it's got a little bit of flash, some long fibers, and it gets a little uh, spiky in all different directions, but we're not gonna really worry about that. We're gonna tie it in all the way back to our tying point. Make sure that's secured in there, that thread core, and we'll take our thread right back. And that's where we're gonna tie in some hackle. You can just take some, so you can just take some saddle hackle, and I'm gonna take it by the tip there or if you have schlappen, that would work as well. And we're gonna just pull back some of those fibers and tie the tip in right there at our tie-in point. We can snip off the tip end there, no big deal, and uh, advance our thread forward to the eye of the hook. That'll, that's We're gonna leave that waiting for us there. I'm gonna take the hackle and the polar chenille and just hold them together. Now one thing you can do is um, pull back or preen back some of those hackle fibers so they, they don't get trapped and just hold these two materials together. You can actually twist them up just slightly and that'll create a little rope there. We're going to use this to build the body of the fly, a little mixture of natural and synthetic and flash materials. So we're just going to hold those both together and just wrap over the top away from us and it's gonna look really messy. Uh, we're gonna comb it out here in just a minute, but it's gonna look a little ugly, so don't worry about it. But notice as I tie, I, I pull back, or pull some of those things back, just to kind of get them laying all in the same direction if I can. So I'm just working my way forward. Once we reach the eye of the hook up here, then we can tie these off. I'm not gonna go right to the eye of the hook. I'm gonna go about an eye length back just to leave another little space there for the um, bunny hair. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my thread straight up in the air and drop, or hold my material straight up in the air and drop my thread over with my left hand, then I can snip off the excess. Now I'm just gonna take a minute and just tie down all those materials and, and get a nice clean head there up at the front that I can uh, whip finish and also tie down that, that bunny hair. Now before I do that though, I'm just gonna take a minute here and uh, try, to, try to clean this up as best I can. I got my handy little comb or any little comb will work. And I'm just gonna pick out some of these trapped fibers and just get them laying all how I like them and get them kind of standing up or laying back just a little bit and clean this up just just slightly there. Now what I'm going to do as well is just pull those to the side and then I can lay that bunny strip right down the center and position it how I like it right on top and then we'll part the hair again. Just wet your fingers, part the hair, and then we can just drop our thread over with our left hand about three times. Give it a little firm tug that just bites down into that rabbit strip. And then I can snip off the excess on top. I'm going to take a minute here again and just tie down that. And try not to crowd your head if you can avoid it. And uh, we can do a little whip finish right there. And we're we're just about finished here with the trailer fly or the back fly. Now what I like to do on this fly, just on the back fly, is actually take a minute here and trim down some of these uh, flash fibers and hackle fibers. 
which is usually a big no-no in uh, especially on streamers but I just seem to like the, the little profile a little better and streamline this fly just a little more um, just on this back. So I'm just going to shape these fibers down and around and uh, flatten them out just a little bit. And I just think it looks a little nicer and uh, gives it a little sleeker profile when you get both of the flies together. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my wire. I just take about a four to five inch strand of beading wire and thread it through the eye of the hook and then just double it back to where I can uh, put my two articulated beads on there. We'll just take this out of my vise and set it aside. And now we're ready for the front fly. So you should have the bigger hook up front and we'll uh, put our cone on there. And now we're gonna basically repeat the same fly in the front, but we've got to attach our trailer fly. So I'll just show you a simple way to do that. You're just gonna attach your thread just like normal. Lay down a little thread base. And now we'll just take our back fly and just position that on top so it's gonna ride correctly. And I like the front bead to almost touch the back bend of that hook. And that seems to be about the right distance. Now we can just secure that on top with some good tight thread wraps. Okay, now I'm going to take some wire cutters and actually just cut the front wire there just, just in front of the hook somewhere. You don't want to use your scissors for that. That'll uh, dull your scissors up pretty fast. And I'm going to cinch this wire down and tie it down actually down around the bend of the hook just a little ways just so that uh, is angled down just a little bit. This will actually help keep that back fly from fouling up or wrapping up around the front fly but also still have a little freedom of movement back there that that fly can swing, swing back and forth. All right, now we're just gonna take the front and the front two wires and we're gonna fold those back just one at a time. And I like to just fold them down the side and uh, bend them back. And then I can come in with my thread and really cinch down on them and crank down on them and tighten them down. So now I'll do the other side and uh, just create a nice even underbody, but also tie down that wire nice and firm. And then I'll bring my wire cutters in and we can snip that off. Now you may have some little burrs, some little rough edges there. You might want to take your thumbnail and push those down and then make a few good wraps with your thread so you can uh, cinch that down. Now it's a good idea as well to uh, lay down a little layer of head cement and that should tighten that down and you shouldn't have any problems. All right, now we can just repeat the steps we did from the back fly on the front fly, starting with our rabbit strips. And I like to measure those so the end of my tail is about even with the start of the head on the, uh, the trailer fly. And we'll just uh, tie, tie down that and repeat those steps. And I'm gonna speed this up here a little bit and not show you those steps. take a piece of marabou and I'm going to try to select a feather that has a nice vein down the center. Not all marabou is e equal so you may have to pick through and find a couple good feathers. And I'm going to take it by the tip and that's a very delicate fragile tip there but we're going to tie that in by the tip right behind the cone. I don't even worry about that front end. We'll, uh, we'll now take our feather and just Carefully wrap that around the, the fly about four to five times over the top away from us. And we want to brush out some of those marabou feathers just so they don't get trapped. And just carefully wrap that and it, it'll form kind of a nice collar on there. So this adds a lot of profile to this fly, but it doesn't add a lot of weight to it. So, so it it free flows and really moves in the water, but it's not really hard to cast. So this marabou really works really well for that to create that profile. Now we're gonna just tie that off. So we just hold it straight up in the air and, and drop our thread over with our left hand right behind the cone. And that should tie down that feather. 
and then we can snip off the excess. Now keep in mind, we've only tied it down with that very fragile tip, so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna actually tie it down a little bit tighter. But before we do that, let's kind of get this, pull out any trap fibers. I'm just plucking a few that I can see there, and I'm gonna bring my handy comb in again. It's amazing what that little comb does to just brushing out some of that marabou, um, getting it laying all how we like it, and it really helps make this fly look nice. Okay, now what we'll do is make a few tight wraps back towards our left, and that will actually secure that feather in fairly tight. And I'm just gonna build a little tag thread base right behind the bead there. Now we're ready to pull over that bunny strip, so we'll just pull it over the top, position it how we like, wet our fingers and part that. And then we can tie it down again right behind the cone. And we're gonna make a few good tight wraps. It'll bite down into that hide. And then we can snip off the excess. A little gap or that thread tag with ice dub. I love ice dub. It's got some good coloration to it, easy to work with. And I think it just adds a little, uh, little color variation to this fly. Now we're ready to whip finish and uh, we're done. So I hope you have a chance to, to get out and fish with this fly.